All right, I think I've got this straight. I think I've got everything in line. NXT is perfect. NXT can do no wrong. We are here to bask in the glory of NXT. Raw is the flagship show, therefore it gets the brunt of all of our criticism. It is what we bitch about. And SmackDown... SmackDown is really just the redhead, or should I say, blue-headed stepchild that we really don't need to talk about at all because nothing ever happens on SmackDown. SmackDown sucks. There's nothing ever good on SmackDown. It's completely irrelevant, right? So riddle me this, Batman. Why was SmackDown the only good show this week? What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your February 4th SmackDown review. And like I said, guys, in comparison to Raw, in comparison to NXT, I love, sorry, my camera's doing a thing, as it usually does, I loved this episode of SmackDown. There was so much done on this episode of SmackDown that it put Raw, and yes, indeed, NXT, to absolute shame. We started off the show, no promo, no pr no preview, no preamble, no drama. We go right into a match. We, I think, had this announced on Raw. Can't remember, if I'm honest. I'm not going to go back to my own video and check. That's for damn sure. Roman Reigns versus Rusev with Barrett and Eric Alberto Del Rio in their corner. And you know, if Roman Reigns is in the opening segment or in the opening match, it's going to have a bearing on the main event, especially when there is no announced main event. Start with a collar and elbow tie-up that's so stiff it has to be broken by the ref. Right hands by Roman, distractions by Barrett and Alberto Del Rio. Roman eats the steps on the outside, boots to the boots to the midsection. My writing, I've told you guys, it's horrible. It looked like my writing said boots to the misdirection, but that's not the case. It's boots to the midsection by Rusev. Both men trade heavy, heavy punches for quite an extended period of time, it has to be said. Rusev misses a spear and eats post shoulder first. You know Rusev isn't going to get a spear, especially on Roman Reigns. Drive by in several clotheslines by Roman Reigns. Set him up in the corner for the, for the you know, the ten clotheslines. You know, most people do the mounted ten punches. Roman does the ten clotheslines. It's good. League of Nations, jump in when Roman gets the upper hand. Three on one. Roman wins by disqualification. Ambrose comes down to make the save. It's still two on three, but we all know Barrett realistically is there as an ornament. Um, Ambrose clears the ring. Ambrose goes to do a dive to the outside and ends up hitting his partner, Roman Reigns. Is there dissension between Ambrose and Reigns? Oh my god. Um, Alberto, Alberto Del Rio and Barrett pose while uh, Ambrose is stuck in the accolade. Roman Reigns chases everybody off with chairs. We end the segment. Uh, not immediately, but eventually there are backstage segments where it is announced that there will be a tag team match later on tonight. Rusev and Alberto Del Rio versus Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns says, you know, mistakes happen. Roddy, Roddy, Raw. Ambrose says, you know, I'm not I wasn't trying to hit my brother, that was a mistake. Roddy, roddy, ra. All the people that are trying to stir the pot can fuck off, pretty much. Kalisto versus Kevin Owens with Dolph Ziggler on commentary. There's all kinds of good here. There, this is like a cheeseburger made of donuts with bacon on it. Like, you really can't ask for much more. Cheap shot in a mud hole stomp and chops by Owens to start back elbow and a handspring in Seguri by Kalisto. Tope con hilo by Kalisto on Kevin Owens on the outside. Release German suplex out of the corner by Owens. Just literally makes Kalisto look like a boomerang. And we go to the commercial break. Owens hangs Kalisto gut first over the ropes and hits a running senton successfully. It's becoming a little too cliche that um, Owens puts way too much... Uh, bravado, way too much posing before the running Sinton, and you know he's going to miss, but he actually hits it, and not to say, not to bash little guys, but the size difference between Kevin Owens and Kalisto makes something like the running Sinton look absolutely devastating. It's like watching Bray Wyatt do a running Sinton to pretty much anybody. Um, head scissor DDT, sorry, Owens misses the second Sinton, a springboard corkscrew crossbody by Kalisto, head scissor DDT by Kalisto, and a lot of kicks by Kalisto. Boots and a tornado DDT by Kalisto. Owens tosses Kalisto gut first into the rail, working over the same midsection as he did on the ropes earlier. You know, first of all, I'm going to use my hands, then I'm going to use something flexible like the ropes, then I'm going to use something solid like the guardrail, not only taking it out into the crowd, out of the ring atmosphere, but also gradually, gradually, gradually increasing the severity of the injury to the body part that he's working on the whole match. The psychology of this match is fucking great. 
Owens tosses, or I just said that, he tosses him, got first near the rail, but then grabs Kalisto, you know, sort of ragdolling him around ringside. To make a statement, he d dusts all the the crap off the commentator's table like he's going to try to pop up powerbomb him through the commentator's table, but he does something even better. Like I say, Ziggler is out there on commentary, pop up powerbombs Kalisto into Ziggler's lap, and as Ziggler's getting up, he super kicks Ziggler into the rail because he can. Um, Ziggler is, manages to rip and claw at him some sort of kind of way so that by the time he gets back to the ring Kalisto can roll him up for the quick win um Kalisto gets a a, a um, David and Goliath style victory over Kevin Owens but the bigger story is the Kevin Owens Dolph Ziggler thing which is really heating up and I really like it and I'm really looking forward to this um it does make Kalisto look good going into Fastlane for his his yet again match with Alberto Del Rio which I'm looking forward to um but the bigger story, the the power bomb spot, and you can only do it with somebody small like Kalisto, or somebody would have gotten hurt. Literally, Dolph Ziggler sitting in the announcer's chair gets a, a human being power bombed into his lap. It's not even like he was lying down flat. We've seen spots in tag matches where they power bomb one partner onto another partner. It hurts both people. You get the pin. It's something simple like that. But it's a little more complicated and a lot more awkward and painful looking when you are not so laid out. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say what I'm saying very, very well. But the fact that he was sitting in the chair where there's chairs and desks and not everything's nice and even and flat and whatever, and the chairs move and the chairs are on rollers. There's a lot of room. There, there you go. There's a lot of room for error in the spot. But it just looked great. And immediately before the crowd can even really react to that spot, for Ziggler to pop up just in time to get a super kick to the face was great. Kalisto gets the win in Amsgrays with his with his win, uh, looking great. Look, a li little bit of a fluky victory, but I mean, Kevin Owens is, is on fire right now in the WWE, so any victory over him is going to look good. Ziggler, Owens is something. I hope they don't blow it off at Fastlane. I hope this is something you could take to Mania. No titles, no steps, just let them have a straight-up match. Maybe no DQ if they want to, but they don't really have to add much to this because there's a natural dynamic between the two, and I think it's fucking great. We replay Miz TV from Raw, where Miz ran down AJ Styles and was all condescending as shit, and basically AJ Styles then beat the crap out of him. So, of course, from then, we go to Ryback versus Eric Rowan, but wait! In a spot that I'm sure drove my buddy James, Fear the Spear 1990, go check him out on YouTube, he needs more subs. In a spot that absolutely probably made him pop, Ryback has new gear. Now, four years, both negatively and you know later on when he started to become popular positively he would get Goldberg chance when he comes down to the ring he's built like Goldberg he's kinda got a moveset like Goldberg he kinda talks like Goldberg so what do we do we get rid of the the airbrush uh, singlet style tights and we put him in black trunks for reasons <laughs> But it's all good. He's fighting Eric Rowan, who's got Braun Strowman out there. Now, I understand with with the situation with Black Jack Mulligan and uh, something we'll talk about later on in this show as well, that Bray Wyatt was not going to be there. But Luke Harper wasn't there either. The only one there was Braun Strowman. So you've got Eric Rowan versus Ryback, which you think, eh. And it's one of those, I almost thought it would be one of those matches that I don't bother taking notes for. But it was actually pretty cool because Ryback, they've been saying it on commentary for weeks and weeks and weeks that he's trying to expand his repertoire. He doesn't want to just be known as a power guy. Now, he, he hasn't. he's shown little glimpses of stuff here and there, but in this match, there was a lot of good stuff. Collar and elbow tie up, hard punches in the corner by Ryback. Cross body, which was good for Ryback for a guy his size, and mounted punches by Ryback. Hangman in the corner by Rowan in a shoulder toggle. Cravat takedown and a boot by Rowan, and the vice. I, I just mean, the, the punching the head together like this vice, it makes him look like he's a, a gorilla trying to win a match. It doesn't make him look good at all. Kitchen sink and blows to the midsection by Rowan. Second rope missile drop kick by Ryback, which wasn't the most pretty thing in the world, but I gotta give him props for trying. I really gotta, you know, he's expanding his repertoire, so to speak. It's it's like what happened when uh, John Cena started doing the US Open Challenge. He started pulling out stuff like the head scissor, which was horrible, but again, you have to give him props for trying in a certain, uh, certain kind of way. Step up, knee lift, and a spine buster by Ryback. Uh, Ryback grabs Rowan and sees Strowman on the apron, throws Rowan into Strowman to get him off the apron. Meat Hook clothesline gets the win for Ryback. Kind of anticlimactic because he went, he won with a um, with base. The Meat Hook's a clothesline, isn't it? Uh, clothesline is you know there's a hundred per match, but 
Um, I can also understand them not wanting to do the uh, the shell shock. I want I can see him trying to whip off something really quick. Whereas the shell shock, there there is a lift and a fall to it. There's there's a bit of a setup to it where it's like okay, there's a sucking guy on the outside that might want to interfere. I got to whip off something quick. A clothesline is quicker. So the ending made sense. It was a little anticlimactic. Goldberg with the new gear. Sorry, <laughs> there you go. Ryback with the new Goldberg gear. Everybody's saying it's going to lead to him versus Goldberg at WrestleMania. I don't want to see that. If we're going to see a, a more intense, less goofy Ryback, and if he's going to start expanding his repertoire, like I really did see a lot in this match tonight, it'll be great. But don't put him up against Goldberg. You don't need to do that. We replay... The whole situation from Raw with Becky and Sasha and the former members of Team Bad and yada yada yada. There's a scene in the back with Renee Young where Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks, they don't like each other but they've got common enemies so they kind of angrily argue with each other and agree to help each other against Naomi and Tamina. Naomi and Tamina, just, just write them off the roster. Just fucking do it. Miz versus AJ Styles. Now, I really really, really, really want to talk to the people who don't give The Miz credit that he deserves. Miz doesn't wrestle a lot these days. He does The Miz TV shtick, and it's usually set, used to set up somebody else's match. But I will say to you, if you haven't seen this match, if you're one of those people that poo poos on SmackDown, even if something good happens on SmackDown, it doesn't count, rowdy, rowdy, raw, I beseech you, go on Facebook, go on, on, on Twitter, go on YouTube, go on uh, whatever torrent site you use, just look for this match. Just look for this match and tell me that this match was not head and shoulders better than it deserved to be based on your guy's opinion of The Miz. Uh, I like The Miz. I think The Miz is fucking ridiculously underrated. I'm not saying he's a top star. He's not a Steve Austin. He's not a Triple H. He's not a Rock. He's not. I will give you that. But I don't think he gets nearly the credit he deserved in this match. Proved it. You got Miz versus AJ Styles based on what happened on Miz TV on Raw. Jericho's on commentary because he also said on Raw he was going to be watching this match very in intently, very interestedly. On commentary, showing shades of turning heel, never really doing it, never really doing anything shitty, just kind of being a sarcastic asshole, really. Right hands and shoulders and a drop kick and a snap suplex by Styles to start the match, all in quick succession, showing us what AJ Styles can do, what his style is like. Miz clips the knee and uh, hits a double leg mount, uh, sorry, Miz clips the knee, double leg t uh, takedown and a mount mounted punch by Styles. I can speak, I swear. Springboard forearm on the outside by Styles. AJ, thanks to the Miz, face plants the apron and eats guardrail, one after the other. Painful looking spots. Jawbreaker by Styles and a back and neck breaker by Miz. Miz chokes on the ropes with a surf, and then he applies a surfboard stretch with a post, which looks painful because AJ sells the fuck out of it. Chops by Styles, kitchen sink by Miz, and a boot in the face. Three times. He's sitting up, almost, almost like a... Undertaker sit up kind of pose. Every time he tries to sit up, eats a boot from Miz. Three times. Forearms by Styles, clothesline by Miz, and another two boots in the same style. Boot by Styles, both men trade punches, double clothesline spot takes us into the commercial break. Uh, I thought the match would have ended before a commercial break. I didn't think this match would go two segments, but they gave it two segments. Corner clothesline and a Death Valley driver across the knee by Styles. Forearm and a DDT. Sorry, from forearm and a from the knees DDT by the Miz. Skull crushing finale fails and it Styles gets a Pele kick. Springboard flying forearm by Styles. Pinning reversal sequence. Pinning reversal sequence takes us into the calf killer, which uh, Mauro Ronaldo called the calf crusher. I guess WWE in their PG ness can't have the word killer in a finishing move. You know, crippler crossface and all that sort of thing. Um, Styles gets the win by submission. With the with the with the calf crusher, now I've been touting the uh, the virtues of Mauro Ronaldo since he's joined the SmackDown announcing, but he does a really good thing at the end. Is he starts listing off AJ Styles' weapons? He starts talking about how and how uh, in, intuitive he is with his move set. Right, right. Starts talking about the flying forearm, which we all know from TNA. Starts talking about the Pele, which is fucking amazing. The Styles Clash, which they held off from showing us until SmackDown last week, and now he's added the Calf Crusher to his arsenal as well, making AJ Styles immediately, immediately you have in your head what a diverse uh, repertoire this guy has, and I think that was a really, really good thing for Mauro Ronaldo to make a point of his commentary at the end of the match. Jericho comes out before AJ Styles can leave the ring. He gives all kinds of respect in the world to AJ Styles. He basically... 
you know, old guy talking to young guy, cliche speech, but he's a, you're good. You've got all the t tools in the world to be really good, but will you ever be great? Will JBL ever be introduced or interviewing you on his uh, Legends thing on the WWE Network? Will you ever be a WWE World Champion? Basically, all this rigmarole that you think is going to lead to them having a match at Fastlane, which I still believe it will, uh, leads to the fact that next week on SmackDown, there's going to be a rematch of the match that they had on Raw last week, which is great. Their match on Raw was great. Go back and watch my review if you haven't seen it. Um, I look forward to it. And this is a cool thing that they're doing. They're using Jericho and they're using AJ Styles to put a, a magnifying glass and a better focus on SmackDown, which is cool because it highlights what I've been saying since the beginning of the year. Guys, good shit happens on SmackDown. I know. I understand what people say. Every time they made a change to SmackDown, every time they change nights, every time they change networks, it's good for a couple of weeks, and then it goes back to status quo. It hasn't done that yet, and we're now into February. So, watch SmackDown. I'm just saying... The New Day versus the Social Outcasts, where I'm, I'm sorry I already used my uh, cheeseburger made out of donuts with bacon on top metaphor, because that's what this could be too. Both groups cut ridiculous promos. Um, New Day cuts a promo about how they're different from everybody else because they have gold. Social Outcasts outdo them, in my opinion, talking about how the New Day are dumb, they look like rhinos, and they think that the bronze belts around their waists are actually gold. Which is great. Um, social outcasts continue their little thing about how Bo Dallas isn't there because Bo Rida is uh, still recording his new gold album. Uh, it's going to be coming out next week. It's going to be better than Flow Rider. Rider, Rider, Rider. I think it's a great comedic way to excuse Bo Dallas not being there um, because of the Blackjack Mulligan situation. It's unfortunate that Bray Wyatt is in a more serious role in the company and they can't do something comical like that to explain him not being there because uh, Bray Wyatt is the leader of his group. Uh, him being there is very noticeable. Bo Dallas, I don't think, is necessarily the leader of the social outcasts. Him not being there, especially when he's not in the match, uh, isn't as noticeable. So that is a really big detriment to Bray. But obviously, first and foremost, he has to go deal with his, his family stuff. Um... Woods and Slater start, um, there's just a really stiff collar and elbow tie-up that turns into a brawl that quickly spills outside, and we quickly go to the commercial break, like one minute into the match. Slater and Kofi trade pin attempts when we get back, uppercut by Rose, who misses a splash, vertical suplex by Big E, who follows it up with stomps, unicorn stampede by the New Day, slingshot low drop kick by Kofi, and a boot slingshot tornado DDT by Woods is fucking crisp as shit. Just let me say that. Spinebuster by Rose, Axel clotheslines everybody. Running knee by Axel on Kofi, everybody brawls outside. Axel tries to roll up Kofi with his feet on the ropes and fails. Kofi does roll up Axel with his feet on the ropes and gets the win. It's, it's, really, it's really cool because you've got two comedic groups here that are over in their own way. New Day are over like Rover, they're untouchable. Social Outcasts do have a cult following because Heath Slater, and I'm one of them, has a following. Following. Bo Dallas has a, a, a following to a certain extent. Adam Rose just has everybody that wants him to be Leo Kruger. And Curtis Axel is such an untapped talent, it's fucking ridiculous. So these guys are both over. They're both comedy heels. It, it's They're both going to cheat. And it's okay. It would be like, um, you know, lie, cheat, steal Eddie Guerrero versus dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair. You, you don't need to establish a face or a heel. They're both going to cheat and it's going to be great. That was good. If you said a, a, a year ago that Kofi Kingston and Big E Langston and Xavier Woods and Heath Slater and, and Curtis Axel and Adam Rose and Bo Dallas were all going to have a match together and it was going to be one of the better things on the show, everybody would have laughed at you. But the way these two groups have come together, uh, I was hoping they would hold off before facing off like they did tonight. I mean, I think if um, the New Day gets one more member for a night... Um, you know, throw in Mark Henry or R-Truth or anybody, really. This could be a Survivor Series match, and it could be a really good Survivor Series match, because comedy aside, there's six fucking phenomenal talents in this ring in this match. It's fucking great. The ending was great. You know, one heel team out-heeled the other, and it's good. And it's so good to the point where um, the commentators were almost behind the New Day on this one, because um, one of the commentators, I believe it was Byron Saxton, although I could be wrong, correct me down below if I am, I believe uh, it was Byron Saxton, said New Day gave 
social outcasts a taste of their own medicine, which is typically what you would say in support of a babyface. So I guess the commentators chose who the babyface was at the last minute, but at the end it doesn't really matter. This match was way better than it had any right to be. I, I encourage you guys, once again, if you did not see SmackDown this week, go back, check out this match. Charlotte versus Alicia Fox, nothing to write home about, but it's a decent match. We're playing up the, the whole... Um, it's not announced yet, but Charlotte's facing Brie Bella at uh, at Fastlane. I said on Raw, have Charlotte and Brie Bella face each other. She, Brie Bella's not going to win, but let her have a match. Let her exist to remind us that Nikki Bella is a thing, the same way she exists to remind us that Daniel Bryan is a thing. And you can have Becky and Charlotte... Sorry, you can have Becky and Sasha versus the two rejected members of Team Bad. And then those two, after they win that match because they will, will go on and have the triple threat match at WrestleMania that's already being rumored. Um, but this was this was a pretty good match. Alicia Fox, I, I guess I say, isn't super fantastic, but she held up her own in this match. She did more in this match than Charlotte. Charlotte won this match because the story said she has to win this match. That's about it, and you'll see what I mean. Collar and elbow tie up and a side headlock by Fox. Boot by Charlotte and a neck breaker in the corner. Charlotte tosses Fox out. Sunset flips by... Fl Sunset flip by Fox. Easy for you to say. Once she gets back in the ring, figure four headlock face buster thing that Charlotte does where she basically humps her opponent's head into the mat because we're trying to make the women's division look legitimate and we do silly things like this. But Alicia Fox makes me happy when she rolls herself over and almost gets the pin out of the reversal, which is really, really good. Uh, double boot spot where they both boot each other. Knees, forearms, two drop kicks, and a tilt whirl backbreaker all by Fox all look fucking great. Northern Lights suplex with a bridge by Fox looks fucking pretty. But because Charlotte is the champion and because the storyline says so, a quick chop block and a figure eight, get the win, Charlotte wins. Um, it's kind of cool because Bree's on the outside and they're still doing this loose association where Alicia Fox and Brie Bella are Team Bella without Nikki there. But Alicia Fox kind of went into her old crazy gimmick for a little bit, pulling her hair out and screaming in the ring. And if she goes back to that, at this point, I really won't mind. Uh, good match. Um, foregone conclusion, for sure. But really really decent match and again anybody you put in a match with charlotte is going to be more interesting than her right now because the whole baby flare shtick is just wearing thin i'm sorry but it is roman reigns and dean ambrose versus rusev and alberto del rio rusev and alberto del rio do not come out to the league of nations music they come out to alberto del rio's music interesting thing to note wasn't really explained and i don't really care why but it was interesting to note Rusev and Ambrose start. Headlock takedown and a takeover by Ambrose. Ambrose works over Rusev's arm for a bit. Shoulder tackle by Rusev. Chops by Ambrose. Boot punches and uppercuts by Roman. High, high, friggin' almost over his head. Inseguri by Rusev. Axe handle by Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio rides a headlock. Alberto Del Rio and Roman Reigns trade punches. Clothesline and a headlock by ADR and a boot by Rusev. Vertical suplex by Rusev and more boots. Hangman on Roman by both guys. And what I mean by that is both got, both Roman Reigns and, sorry, both Rusev and Alberto Del Rio are on the outside. Roman's sort of got his head over the ropes. Rusev pulls on it for a while, choking him on the top rope. And then when the referee shoes him away, Alberto Del Rio comes and finishes the job. I think that's, you know, for a team that I don't really care about, they're showing good teamwork, and that's good. Back in the ring, though, Samoan drop by Roman. Running elbows in a corner splash by Ambrose. Drop kick by Ambrose, who dumps Rusev outside and sets him up for the suicide dive. Inseguri by Rusev. Rebound clothesline by Ambrose. Drive by on Rusev by Roman. Uppercut to Alberto Del Rio. Superman punch on Rusev and a boot to ADR. Alberto Del Rio and Roman Reigns brawl on the outside. R Ambrose goes for another suicide dive and hits Roman again teasing the dissension but in the middle of them sort of jaw jacking at each other rusev tries to sneak up behind ambrose rusev quick superman punch tosses him back in the ring spear baby faces get the win obviously because the league of nations never need to win ever um this didn't do anything for alberto del rio going into his match with Callisto at fast lane uh, I'm, I'm willing to let that one go. Rusev is being booked like a boss in these matches, even though he's not winning. Ambrose and Roman, they're teasing the dissension. I get it. They're going to destroy each other so that they're easy pickings for Brock Lesnar, except for Brock Lesnar is going to be taken out by the Wyatts. It's predictable as fuck, but guys, you know what? I'm looking forward to this match at Fastlane. This was a good match tonight, and considering I don't really give a fuck about Rusev, and the match was enjoyable, and we saw Roman Reigns twice tonight, and it didn't bug me at all like it bugged some people, this was a good fucking show. 
if this had happened on Raw, we would be saying that Raw was good, but because it's SmackDown, because it's got that blue haze around it, people don't want to give SmackDown its proper due. I don't understand it. Because, as I said, I said it at the beginning, I said it in my intro, and I'm going to say it one more time now. Man, this week, Raw sucked. I'm the super positive guy, and I'm going to say that Raw sucked. NXT sucked. I know, that breaks all the golden rules of YWC-ism, but it did. You had one decent Asuka match against a girl that I didn't know, and that was the best match of the night. So, NXT, or sorry, SmackDown, which is apparently so irrelevant according to everybody, was the saving grace of WWE this week. If you disagree with me, if you disagree with anything I've said about this show tonight, please put me down in the in put it down in the box below. But please, I I, I respectfully say show your work if you're going to tell me that this wasn't a great show. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I don't have anything else to say other than the fact that it was a fucking great show. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.